Hello and welcome. My name is Daria Volkova, and today I break down another Grafana concept – transformations. You can find them here in any panel, edit mode, second tab, next to the query tab. There is a long list of available transformations. What do they transform and how can they make your life easier? Let's find out in this video. Let's go! Any data source returns data in a particular format. I have the results of query A on my schema for that. A visualization panel in its turn expects the data to be in a specific format as well, a format that this panel is designed to work with. If those two formats align or, in other words, match, meaning they are the same formats, then no transformation is needed. If a data source format differs from a visualization panel's expectations, apply transformations. Let's take a look at some examples. I will use the website analytics dashboard we have on our live project. It's not publicly available dashboard yet, but we might consider changing that in the future. I go into the edit mode for the map visualization. In this example, we use the Apache eCharts panel. The trick is somehow knowing what data format your visualization panel requires. For this visualization, based on what I found in the documentation and try and error approach, I know that the map visualization expects a two-dimensional array of data, country and value. As you can see, we use the Loki data source since we collect our website analytics in Loki. I will switch to the transformation tab and click this eye icon to disable each transformation. The visualization now obviously cannot work. I will switch to the table view here to observe the data coming from the data source. All right, see this drop down here? It means that the data comes from the data source in multiple frames. On the diagram, it looks like this. The data source returns every country in a separate table with two columns, time and value. I add the first transformation, series to rows. In my case, I just click the crossed eye icon. The transformation converts multiple frames into one. No parameters are needed. See here, instead of a dropdown, I have a new column containing the country code and all data is in one data frame. Then I add another transformation, group by. In the parameters section, I must specify which columns to group by. In my case, it is the column metric, which contains the country code. And for every country, I would like to summarize all values, meaning I need the total. This transformation has an identical concept to the SQL group by clause. With both transformations turned on, here in the table view, I have two columns of data, country and value, exactly what my visualization panel requires. Switch back to the visualization view, and now I can see how many requests arrived on our website during the last six hours. Next, I will open this bar chart visualization in edit mode. To build it, I utilized four transformations. Let me switch to the table view here and make the two last transformations invisible by clicking the eye icon. The first and second transformations are similar to what I just reviewed – series to rows and the group by. So on top of those two, to have my bars in descending order, I added sort by. Then I added the limit to keep only the first 15 rows. I utilized all these four transformations to convert the multiple data frames that my Loki data source retrieves into one data frame sorted by one column and limited by the number of rows. This status visualization uses transformations as well. If I open it in edit mode, here I have two transformations. To demonstrate how they work, I'm switching to the table view and making transformations invisible one by one. Here I have multiple data frames, one for each status. On every data frame, I have time and the number of requests with the corresponding status. This join by field transformation joins all data frames by the specified column. I choose the outer mode to keep all rows from all data frames and join by the time field. 
After applying the join by field transformation, I have the time column and separate columns for every status. If there was no request for a particular status at a given time when other requests occurred, I'll see this null value. Organized fields transformation helps with aliases. For example, here status 200 sounds cryptic. When I turn the transformation on, the titles changes to the English words I entered, and the data look more readable with meaningful titles. This format is suitable for the stacked bar in the time series. How do I know that? Patience and luck. Or maybe I found it in the far corner of internet. Now it's hard to tell. There is one transformation that stands out from all others. If I go back to the schema I showed at the beginning of this video, I can depict that one special transformation as extra for both scenarios. You can use it either when no transformation is required or as an additional one to any number of other transformations. It is called config from the query result. It differs from all others because it sends the retrieved value directly into the panel configuration. With that transformation, the configuration of the panel is dynamic. For example, on this time series visualization, I have two queries. Query A fetches the data point to display on the graph. I have values for time points. And then query B fetches the minimum and maximum values. In the table view, I can see them if I select the mean max data frame from the drop down here. It is displayed as a second data frame. Then on the transformation tab, I added config from query results. I want to use the query B, apply to fields with type, apply to options number, and I want mean and max values. The moment I turn this transformation on, I lose the dropdown. And here on the right hand side, under the standard option for mean and max, two yellow circles appear. Yellow circles mark the configuration fields that could come directly from the data source. Also, when the transformation is on, there is nowhere where you can look at what has been extracted, but you can always turn the transformation off, select that query in the dropdown, and here you go, review the current fetched data. I hope I have broken down the transformations for you. There are many more you can choose from. If anything in particular is confusing, feel free to post a question in the comment section down below. Remember to subscribe. Every notification about a new subscriber transforms our focused faces into faces with big smiles. Thank you for watching and see you next time.